382, Great Healthiness. We, the new, the nameless, the hard to understand, we firstlings of a yet untried future, we require for a new end also a new means, namely a new healthiness, stronger, sharper, tougher, bolder and merrier than any healthiness hitherto. He who so longs to experience the whole range of hitherto recognised values and desirabilities and to circumnavigate all the coasts of this ideal Mediterranean Sea, who from the adventures of his most personal experience wants to know how it feels to be a conqueror and discoverer of the ideal, as likewise how it is with the artist, the saint, the legislator, the sage, the scholar, the devotee, the prophet and the godly nonconformist of the old style, requires one last thing above all for that purpose, great healthiness, such healthiness as one not only possesses but also constantly acquires and must acquire because one continually sacrifices it again and must sacrifice it. And now, after having been long on the way in this fashion, we Argonauts of the ideal, who are more courageous perhaps than prudent, and often enough shipwrecked and brought to grief. Nevertheless, as said above, healthier than people would like to admit. And dangerously healthy, always healthy again, it would seem as if in recompense for it all, and that we have a still undiscovered country before us, the boundaries of which no one has yet seen, a beyond to all countries and corners of the ideal and known hitherto, a world so over-rich in the beautiful, the strange, the questionable, the frightful and the divine, that our curiosity as well as our thirst for possession thereof have got out of hand, alas, that nothing will now any longer satisfy us. How could we still be content with the man of the present day after such peeps, and with such a craving in our conscience and consciousnesses? What a pity! But it is unavoidable that we should look on the worthiest aims and hopes of the man of the present day with ill-concealed amusement, and perhaps should no longer look at them. Another ideal runs on before us, a strange, tempting ideal, full of danger to which we should not like to persuade anyone, because we do not so readily acknowledge anyone's right thereto, the ideal of a spirit who plays naively that is to say, involuntarily, and from overflowing abundance and power, with everything that has hitherto been called holy, good, inviolable, uh, divine, to whom the loftiest conception would the people have reasonably made their measure of value, would already imply danger, ruin, abasement, or at least relaxation, blindness, or temporary self-forgetfulness. The ideal of a humanly superhuman welfare and benevolence, which may often enough appear inhuman. For example, when put by the side of all past seriousness on earth, and in comparison with all past solemnites in bearing, word, tone, look, morality and pursuit, as their truest involuntary parody but with which, nevertheless, perhaps the great seriousness only commences. The proper interrogation mark is set up, the fate of the soul changes, the hour hand moves, and tragedy begins.